Hello, everybody. I'm Andy Hull. And I am Sean Tabaris. And this is the Commander's Brew. This week, back to basics. Naya. Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 104 of the Commander's Brew Commander podcast. Hello, Sean Tabaris. Hello, Andy Hull. How are you today? Uh, I'm great. How are you? Great. Okay. We'll just keep asking each other these questions forever. (laughs) Have you visited a vending machine today? (laughs) Uh, No, I have not yet visited my local vending machine. Oh, excellent. I hope they restock the Ringolos. Yes, me as well. I love Ringolos. That's a Ringolos are a Canadian thing, so no one's gonna know what are I'm they? talking about. Yeah. Oh man, you guys don't know Ringolos. You guys are oh man. I even feel like I meet a lot of Canadians who don't know what Ringolos are. <laughs> I'm surprised the Juggalos don't have Ringolos. Just because they have similar names. <laughs> yeah, they would love that, wouldn't you? If you're a Juggalo, first of all, hello. Uh, secondly, <laughs> wouldn't you love a Ringolo to go with your Fago Pop? Ringolo, Ringolos. They're like the little. I, I do this because you can fit them on your finger. They're, they're like circles. Potato rings. Yeah. They're like they're chips, potato rings. But they're rings. Yeah. If you were a child and had small fingers, you could in, get engaged to another child using one of these rings. That's right. And they're like barbecue flavored. Yeah. They're kind of barbecue Yeah. Anyways. I don't we, endorse child marriage. We have them in our. <laughs> <laughs> the, the official way of which to uh, engage it within is using Ringolos, and I'm sure the Humpty Dumpty Corporation doesn't uh, endorse that either. But uh, no, 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 no. Yeah. Anyways, so just to be clear, <laughs> we're not sponsored by Ringolos or child marriage. Just so no. that everyone knows. No. About us. No. 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 Uh, but you know we are sponsored by uh, uh, yeah here we go as a podcast here's what we do we bring you a new commander deck every week that's going to be on a theme this week back to basics Naya it's going to be under $50 and there's going to be no card over 5 bucks probably so you can just go right on out and buy this whole deck and start playing it right away uh, we also you know we have a Patreon patreon.com if you would like to Go above and beyond and support that way. You're more than welcome. That makes you eligible for our deck renos and other fantastic giveaways that we will do maybe here or maybe on Twitch. Check that out. Regular schedule TBA. We're also sponsored now. We got a new one. uh, Ultimate Guard sleeves and boxes and binders and accessories and things. Uh, We're going to be able to do a lot more giveaways because of Ultimate Guard. So thanks to them. Keep an eye out for that. And at the very least, you know, you can always find us on Twitch at the end of the month doing a brew and brawl where we brew a commander deck with you, the listeners, and then we play it with you, three of the listeners, <laughs> because MTG only lets you have four players at a time. That's going to be on July 30th, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And? And I, the, the business isn't done until we thank our longest standing sponsor, the Wizards Tower, wizardtower.com. Let's hear an ad from them now. Okay, everybody, here I am reporting to you from the news thopter of Amonkhet. Um, if you're still getting this, that means the news station is still standing. I can't confirm that, but I'm still going to broadcast just in case. Traffic. No roads anymore, so, I mean, traffic's not moving, but technically that's because everything has been devastated. So... I guess if you have to commute anywhere, I guess that means you still got a place of business to go to, so that's great. Um, What about weather? Uh, It's raining fireballs. Uh, No sign of that stopping anytime soon. Uh, Hopefully, if this is actually as advertised and it is only an hour of devastation, that this will only last an hour. So we only have a little while left, if that's true. I'm going to run out of gas anyway in a while, so it won't matter for me, but just as a broadcast, I figured I'd do it. And this news thopter is brought to you by the Wizard's Tower, wizardtower.com, where you can get singles shipped anywhere in Canada for free for $15. And if you use coupon code Tower of Brews, you get an extra 5% off, and you'll get 3% kickback towards your next order. 
hopefully you haven't been devastated and you're around to make another order. Nonetheless, this is Dave from the Chopper signing off. Hopefully not for the last time. Watch out for those fireballs, people. Wizard's Tower having the highest honor of the, getting the only ad with background music for uh, us. That's right. Yeah, that's a special honor that they get. Yeah. Uh, cool. Um, so this week, uh, we're holding off on the roast, right? Right. So you, you might have be wondering, we have all these roasts ready for brain in a jar. Why don't we have that? We've been using the hashtag commanders burn. Where is the roast? Here's a little secret about time. We're recording this before you guys have heard the episode where we tell you what to roast next. You don't even know about the roast. You don't even know about it at the time time of... Right now, for us. Right, right. Right now, we are... I I can't think about time like this, Andy. I I get my head gets I get knotted up. (laughs) I get knotted up in logic. Yeah, yeah, I do. I really do. I love time travel movies, but they confuse me. But I love them. So you're in you're in the future listening to this, but but we're in the past and we haven't revealed the information yet. Yes. But when you do hear this, you'll you'll know about it. You will have known. Yes. And if one of you kills us right now, (laughs) please don't. Please don't. But if it accidentally happens, if you come back, I know none of you would on purpose. If, yeah. Then this podcast never gets released. Did you hear about that? Um, uh, Stephen Hawking made. I heard about him. Yeah, you heard about him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he made a a like meet and greet for time travelers. Oh, I have heard of this. But he didn't uh, announce it until after he had done it. Yes. So like, but like, even in his like tricky way he was trying to do things, it doesn't make sense because if he's in the timeline that announces that it's happening, well, there could be a time traveler in our future that hears about it, goes back in time, but that would have been, that would have started a new timeline. Yeah. Right? Like you still need one thing to happen before the other thing can happen. Not, I, I guess... But I guess that's like part of what he, what he, uh, his theory about time travel and and obviously like metaphysics and all kinds of crazy stuff. Like that's real though. Like like top physics people are talking about the legit possibility of time travel. Yeah. Uh, they were just talking about. You know, uh, Einstein called it like if he had a word for it where like some particles would, when you observe them it would affect a, a, a particle that's like far away from it mm-hmm. instantaneously. But, and then the new, new studies are just saying that maybe it's possible that future particles can influence past particles that we wow. see now. I don't know, man. I don't know. That's wild, weird, wild stuff, man. <laughs> I, I just think, I just think that like, yeah, I, I'm, I played a fun board game once where the whole, the whole point of it was to finish your time machine the fastest and go back to whatever year the U.S. Patent Office was invented and register it as patent number one. Oh, so wow. like, because <laughs> so like, like, if there was ever time travel, it would be patent number one. Yeah, of course, that's a <laughs> brilliant and super funny idea. <laughs> yeah, like I love that that's a board game, but like that should be a movie. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, that's a great idea. That should be a TV show. That's amazing. Sure. Oh my god! But then wouldn't you just Go back in time and start the patent office process earlier and earlier yeah. and earlier and earlier and earlier. Like, there's no end to that. Well, in theory, there's a point where you just can't start a patent office because there's not enough infrastructure to support it. Right. Yeah. So but then you finding... can start the infrastructure earlier. I don't know, man. Oh, there you go. See, never say never. You'd have to go back to like Cro Magnon Man and start a patent office with a bunch of cavemen and rocks. Like, yeah. You, okay, guys. Do you understand? <laughs> that this is the patent office. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And Kay. this time machine. It's a, first of all, I'm not going to explain what it is, but it's the it's not patent number one. Okay. Cool. Okay. See this rock here? <laughs> yeah. That's my patent. Okay. If you want to use your rock, you have to give me some pelts. Hey. Okay. Hey. Pay attention. Hey, you. <laughs> quit sniffing your 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 kid's back. Quit looking for lice in your wife's hair. Get over here. 
I mean, yeah. I assume she's your wife. You don't have uh, uh, listen. I don't know ceremony. Yeah, we, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. religion's I a hope, bit off. I hope, uh, I there... hope there was consent there. <laughs> <laughs> It's just you run into this whole whack of other problems if you like try to start civilization way earlier. Well, then, you... then I just keep picturing like the guy who's like, oh, oh man, Johnson went back in time. He started the patent office at Cro-Magnon Man. Well, guess what? I'm going to stick it to him. I'm going to go back to the primordial ooze and get that kicking way before, you know, like do the Q yeah. and Picard thing where you like you go to the yeah, ooze yeah. pool. Oh, oh man, man, that ooze pool. Love that ooze pool. Love that ooze pool. Uh, okay, we should get to this new uh, game we have. So, Yo, we have a new game. Uh, that's why we can't do the roast. I forgot that's why we got into this. Yeah, that's how we got place. into this. Yeah. We can't do the roast, but we want to do fun games because that's a fun thing to do. So we came up with another one. It's a variation on a classic. It's the old categories name uh, uh, game. game. Each of us will come up with a thing, and we have to name magic cards one at a time. And the first person who can't name a magic card that is new that doesn't satisfy the restrictions of the thing, the category that person's out. The other person wins. Yeah. Yeah. And for example, if you were just to do like you do this with celebrities, so you might be like the game, you'd need a big group. So you might be like actors who have played James Bond, right? I would say Sean Connery. And he would say Roger Moore. I would say Pierce Brosnan. Yeah. And I'd say, um, George Lazenby. And then I would say Daniel Craig. There you go. And then the last one of us. Oh, I, I, I can't think of another one. Oh, Bruce Hornsby. Oh, man. No, Not he was true, never so then I would have won. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Timothy Dalton was the other one. Yes, Timothy Dalton's the other one. Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, Woody Allen also technically played James Bond. Oh, okay. Uh, cool. Yes. Anyway, that's yeah. how this game goes. Yeah. That's how this game goes. We just played it with James we Bond. Did. We did. We just quickly played it. Uh, so it's great. So we're going to do it with, obviously, magic-related things. Um and uh, yeah, who, who who wants to go first? Uh, I'm ready to go first. Okay. Uh, and we decided the person who comes up with the category has to go first. Uh, yes. That's what we decided. Yeah. So my category is seven CMC enchantments. Oh my God. That's so I'll, specific. I'll go first. I don't even Mine, think I can name one. <laughs> I'll go first. Mine's dilation. Overwhelming splendor. Is that the name of the card? The The new one? Uh, that's eight. Oh, okay. I'll give you another shot though, because that's a, that's a shot in the dark Seven on a new one. Mana. Yeah, uh, this is man. This is way more specific than what mine was gonna oh, be. Oh wow! I thought this would be general enough. Seven mana enchantments. I'm half guessing on some of this. What about? I'll do another one though, if um, it helps you think. Seven mana enchantments. Oof. Brother, I don't know. Um. Trying to go through all the colors and think of any. Uh... No, I got. I, I I don't even know. All right, I, I was going to go single Z- one. Zendikar Resurgent next. Oh yeah, okay, sure. Uh, that's all I got right now. So you only. So even you only had two. I mean, I was ready to go back and forth. I, Here's what mine was going to be: on... creatures from Magic Origins. <laughs> Oh, that's hard too. Right, but it's like a bit of a bigger pool. <laughs> I don't know if it is. How many? How many seven mana enchantments are there? Oh, I bet well, you yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm sure there's lots, but I mean, that's you're getting obscure there. Okay, so we're doing creatures from Magic Origins. You got to go first. Okay, I got to go first. Jace Vrin's Prodigy. Okay, Chandra Nalar. No. She was in it. Yeah, but that's not what she's. Oh, called. that's not her name. That's not her name. Okay, so then I'll Chandra say Chandra Nalar is a okay. planeswalker. That's Not true. So I'll say this. I'll say this. Uh, uh, so technically, uh, I just won. <laughs> if you want to okay. be, if you want to be a hard ass, but yeah, let's, yeah, let's keep yeah. playing. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I'll say that one is called the following. <laughs> uh, oh, uh, Alhameret High Arbiter. Oh, okay. Uh, Nissa Vastwood Seer. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Um, I can't remember his comma. I can't remember what's after his comma. So I'm going to say, well, this is hard. <laughs> um, I can describe him in every way except the name. <laughs> okay. Okay. Go ahead. 
Uh, it's the two. It's the one in a red prowess. When it enters the battlefield, you get to look at the top card of your library, and you can cast it that turn. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. We're it's bad with names. One. This is like not the best game for us to play. <laughs> this is a terrible game for us to play. Uh, get, just you can't name the other like. Oh, flip? I got, I got one, I got okay. one, I got one. Okay, relic seeker. Yes, good one, good one, good one. Um, Liliana, heretical healer. <clears throat> do you have all the planeswalkers locked? Are you ready to do all the planeswalkers? Uh, I don't remember Chandra's. Uh, like I can't remember other, Kithian's other last part either. I, I remember. I remember his. Um. Um. Oh. Um. Kithian's irregulars. Ah yes, yes, yes. Kithian, hero of Akros. Hero of Akros. I thought that was it. I just didn't want to guess it. Okay. Um, 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 oh, oh, see, I can think of it exactly what it is. I just can't come up with the GD name. Uh, Whirler Rogue. Oh, that's a great one. Yeah, Whirler Rogue is from Origins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is yep. it? Yeah, it is, right? That's it's, not it's blue. It's yeah. two blue yes. blue. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. I remember now, yeah. There's a card that I I often mess mess up with that that's in um um uh Kaladesh. Uh okay. Um oh man, uh, I don't remember the rest of his thing. Uh because he has a comma. Oh, we well, got to you got to do it. Yeah, I know. Oh man. Uh, 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 how about this one, Jesse and Thief? Isn't that what she's called? No, wait, no, no, no. That's a different card completely. Yeah, um, yeah. I'm thinking of. Um, Is this only frustrating to our listeners? It's got to be right. It has to be. Is this any fun or is this pure frustration? <laughs> Have we distilled the most frustrating thing of making people <laughs> shout at their podcast into a game? <laughs> we... uh, <laughs> yeah, no, Jesse Thief is definitely a different card. Um, I'm th the one I'm thinking of. I can picture the art of it. Uh, she also has prowess, but she's the she's the scroll thief. Yes, uh, the card that has prowess from Origins. Is it Jesse and is Lookout? It? No. Okay, I'll just lose and I'll look this up because it's bothering the hell out of me. You know who else I can't think about for the life of me is the 2-2. Two, two ah, that... right, it's Jesse and Thief. Jesse okay. and Thief. Okay, so we'll give it to you. We'll give it yeah, to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll say... I will say... Weird, Jesse and... I thought that was a... Weird. I'm trying to think of... Uh, Hicks's prison warden. Ah, yeah, I think that's right. That sounds right. The one I can't remember is um, Kothafed. I don't know his. I don't oh, know the other. I don't right. know the other stuff on his card. Liliana's other boss. But maybe there's like wiggle room where like if you say if there's more than one version of the card, you have to say the whole thing. But like. There's only one Kothafed. There's only one Hyksus. Yeah. You know okay. I mean? Well, since we'll do the baby version because we're bad at this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so let's, say, yeah exactly. let's say Kothafed counts. Okay. 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 So, so then I can say Chandra, right? Yeah. yeah I was just looks like I was going to say if there's more than one Chandra, you do have oh, to specify. Oh, but there is because she's a flip. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. yeah that's. I don't okay. Know. Then. Okay. Then. No problem. I won't say Chandra. Okay. Uh, I'll say this. I'll say Topan Freeblade. Yes. Yes, Topan Freeblade indeed. <laughs> um hard oh, hard uh, game. Hard game. Conclave Naturalist. Oh, good one. Good one. Um <laughs> this is like we're going see, I don't want to play anymore. Yeah, play okay. Anymore. This one like so this, this one's this one's that that's a big one. This is good. We'd eventually I mean one one of us was already dead, right? Like we'll just keep yeah. playing for it because it's fun. The other the other one I was gonna do, which um uh, uh we, we won't play it again, but was gonna be artifacts with colored mana symbols in their CMC. So that's like again a more way more narrow version. You of could it. you could broaden it by say artifacts with a color identity that isn't colorless. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. 
artifacts with a color identity. I could do that one quick. You think so? Okay. I think so. Okay, Lifecrafter's bestiary. Uh, birthing pod. Ah, yes. Um, Thopter assembly. Yep. Um, mage, the, uh, ma- is it Mage Slayer? Mage Slayer sword. Ma- the Mage Slayer. Yeah, okay, I'll, I'll accept that. Uh, I know what you're saying there. Uh, yeah. Uh, uh, Brea. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, Sharum the Hegemon. Yes. Oh, man. Okay. Uh, I should, I get, yeah. Um, Sharding Sphinx. <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so like maybe, maybe it was better to say non creature artifacts because there's a lot. Yeah. Of maybe it was better. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I don't want to play anymore. Yeah, now I don't, we're back in that zone. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. But that's the game. Uh, it's, it's a fun thing we're going to do from time to time just to like get, get it going, get, get, get the, get the juices flowing. It's also good to help us remember <laughs> card names because we're, we, we, we should get better at that. It's training. It's, it's training. It's mental training. That's exactly yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, let's so, let's get to the main uh, let's get to the main uh, category for c- category. It's already it's on my brain. I can't get rid of it. Uh, let's get <laughs> to the main topic uh, for the episode today, and it's back to basics. Naya. Now, uh, we did uh, one of these already, where we did back to basics Sultai, and what we did was we built a Sultai deck that both encompassed. Uh, like a more simple gameplay, uh, but also with things that were sort of st- not necessarily staples, but like just like basic things you need in a commander deck, right? And basic things that Sultai likes to do and that Sultai likes to have happen with with its various commanders and strategies. So we thought we'd do, an, we'd, we'd do another one uh, this time with Naya, so with red, uh, green, and white. Um, uh Sorry, you can tell I did that. I, I did that color thing out of order because you can tell the commander I'm looking at, which is Marath, um, ah. which kind of uh, brings up our first like kind of problem. So uh, in doing in using Naya, okay, Sultai has a pretty straightforward like philosophy almost with the way it works. It wants to use graveyards. It's it's a it's j- tends to be a bit more controlling. Um, there's a lot of creature creature like creatures are used a lot in Sultai because it, it interacts with graveyards to bring things back out and so on. Naya has a bit of a split personality. Right. Uh, I've I've discovered, right? Um Naya both wants to do uh it wants to have tokens out, small tokens and lots of them. Uh or it wants big creatures. Uh plus like more than 5 power toughness, right? It wants to have the biggest creatures it can. Uh, similarly, it wants to draw a card for every creature you control, for example. So you want to have tokens, or it wants you to draw a card for the like the equal to the p- greatest power among creatures you control. So you get this weird dichotomy where like Naya can split in two different ways, and it's one's more green, one's more white. Red t- tends to straddle uh, the line there and can actually fit pretty nicely into either side of this, as you can see. So it was a little harder to like pick one sort of deck and say this is what is a back to basics Naya build without sort of ignoring half of what Naya does. Right. So what I've done is as I've put together what I th- uh, but I've done it. I, I've I've tried to do it anyways. I tried to do my best with it, which is put together a deck that sort of encompasses the things that Naya wants to do while still creating a strategy that that could work. Um, while il- illustrating like some staple type of, you know, basic things um, as well. And that does come somewhat at the expense of there is some some uh, level of complexity in some of the cards. So it's not exactly like exactly the same as our soul type episode, but it's I think it's similar enough that you, you'll get what you came for when it comes to a back to basics episode. Uh, yeah. And, you know, let's I mean, I'm talking about, you know, uh, having things be slightly more uh, convoluted or complicated than I exactly wanted him to be at the top. So why not talk about one of the commanders, if not the commander of the deck, which is Marath, Will of the Wild. Uh, we couldn't have picked a card with more text on it. <laughs> but M- Marath is a, is a, a really great Naya commander because it does absolutely all of the things Naya wants to do and like uh, uh, can do. So Marath is red, green, white. 
It's a legendary elemental beast. It's a zero zero. But Merith uh, enters the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters on it equal to the number of uh, sorry the amount of mana spent to cast it. So right there, you've got one a, a commander that grows with the game, which feels very Naya, right? It starts off smaller and can get as big as the number of times it's been cast, essentially. Uh, um, it also then has a, a, a pay X, remove X plus one plus one counters from. Oh yeah, so here, here's the there's new templating. If you if I guess if they reprint this card. X, remove X plus one plus one counters from Marath, and then choose one. You either put X plus one plus one counters on target creature. Uh, Marath deals X damage to target creature or player, or create an XX green elemental creature token. And for all of those, X cannot be zero. That's uh, added on after. But um, so you make tokens. You can make small tokens. You can make big tokens. Uh, you can deal direct damage as a very red ability. Or you can put plus one plus one counters on on a creature and make it bigger so you you have very much the three colors well represented here um but yeah. that being said it's a pretty complicated right it's a pretty complicated card there's a lot going on i like to think of it like i like to imagine a back to basics deck as something you could give someone without a lot of commander experience someone who knows how to play magic and they understand all the phases in combat but they just don't know every card uh and you know, you can't always give your current deck to those people because they need to know what the combos are and they right. need to know the nuances. They need to know what they're going for. Ideally, it's something where, you know, if you know it, how things work, that works in your favor. But if you don't, your cards still do good things. For that reason, I think Marath is OK because, you know, you don't need Marath to win like the other cards do things like we have creatures that will fight and do combats and, you know, we will remove things. Uh, but Marath is there to support if we want it to. And if the player decides they'd rather just make a bunch of little people with them, that's fine. Or if they just want to do some damage, that's also fine. There's no like it's not like requiring to know how to pi pilot Marath isn't the baseline for this deck. Yeah. Now I will say that because Marath has like three different abilities and acts pretty differently than a lot of other commanders, it can be overwhelming for a new player. So if you're talking about that sort of angle, there there are of course other commanders that would work uh, pretty well in any Naya deck. Although again, most of them straddle either or, or don't straddle, and they either like choose a side. Gaiji Honored One is one that I think kind of works okay for both. It's obviously a little bit better, and I think like a token deck, but I think it still works for a big you know big smashy beast deck. It's two red, uh, green, white. Uh, for a 4-4 four, four beast. Uh, it says, whenever a creature attacks one of your opponents or a planeswalker an opponent controls, that creature gets plus two, plus zero until end of turn. So it really, it, it encourages your uh, opponents to attack each other, and then everything you attack with, of course, will also get the, the plus two, plus zero bonus. So, yeah. so Gahiji is a nice, it's it's straightforward, it's simpler. Um, so if you're looking for it as like a like a basics as far as like simplicity goes, Gahiji is, is, a, is a solid commander to use. Yeah, I like to think of it like... We kind of lucked out with the Salt I want as being the first one because uh, Tassiger's, his main commander function is sort of like pseudo card draw, which is a fundamental of commander. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are very few Naya commanders that deal with fundamentals, right? It's not fundamental to make tokens. It's not fundamental to like do direct damage. But at least combat is, I mean, arguably not fundamental. You could make decks that don't do combat as well. Mm -hmm. But combat is a fairly fundamental part of i think every commander game anyway well yeah not, so not everyone's gonna someone's gonna have a deck that wants to attack at some right on some level at some time so so at least for that reason gahiji is on a fundamental level like if you have your commander your combat gets better if you don't have your commander you're still doing combat that's still okay mm -hmm. definitely uh my one complaint that i had with gahiji when it first came out is that it wasn't a five five so that my, my ale which also came in in this pre-con it's funny because we've chosen the last three commanders we talked about are all from the same pre-con. Um, oh, wow. Mael uh, puts five uh, creatures with five power more, and it doesn't hit. It won't hit Marath or Gaiji. So it's like, oh, <laughs> okay. But uh, Mael's a tough one. I think Mael's the most build around of the three we've mentioned. Y yeah. Oh, certainly. I mean, you just, this is definitely the smashy big creature version of, of Naya. Um and it's, it's yeah. It's Which a little... you could do. Like, yeah, I could certainly absolutely. see you putting together a simplistic, I, the word simple maybe is the wrong word. Maybe you just mean like value based. I don't know. I don't want to seem like dumb, but just like every card works on its own. 
You know what I mean? Well, that's the thing. Like, like in, in these decks, like as long as you're ramping a lot, you don't have to worry. Like my ale is is bonus uh, almost, right? Like yeah. yeah, you can build in ways to abuse her, but like uh, abuse her ability, <laughs> I should say. Uh, but uh, you won't. Uh, you'll get. You'll still be able to catch your big monsters, and they're still going to be good. But let's get into it. Let's talk about, you know, uh, categories of of a, of a deck that wants to use basics. So we're going to look at basic categories, basically, <laughs> basically. Basically, uh, we're going to look at stuff like ramp and card draw. Right? These are always. I think these are going to be the ones that always pop up. We mentioned this before we started recording. Fundamental. Fundamental part of commander. Uh, two most important parts of of the uh, uh, of the game and. Uh, let's talk about what's available to Naya. So obviously we have green, so we're pretty covered for ramp. So many ramp spells. We could go on all day talking about how many ramp spells are in green, but we just want to highlight one or two. Yavi Maya Elder is one. I don't think we talk about enough on the show. Uh, obviously, I think a lot of people are aware of this card and why it's so good, but this does both. It draws you cards at ramps. It's one green green for uh, a 2-1 uh, human druid that says when uh, Yavi Maya Elder dies... You may search your library for up to two basic land cards, reveal them, put them in your hand. If you do, shuffle your library. But you can also pay two colorless, uh, or rather generic, to sacrifice Yavin My Elder to draw a card. So it's not exactly ramp, and it's not exactly it's not card advantage either. I mean, I guess it is because you get the lands, but like it replaces itself and you get two lands in your hand. So Yavin My Elder is a great card. It's not gonna actually ramp you, but it's gonna let you hit those um it's gonna let you hit those land drops on time. Unless, Sean, you have the next card, in which case it will it will help you ramp. Ooh, this is burgeoning. Uh, it's a single green enchantment. Whenever an opponent plays a land, you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield. Great. Simple. Amazing, right? Uh, Simple, effective. Uh, I will say this. Uh, burgeoning is fantastic if you can get it out on turn one or turn oh, two. Oh, boy. Yeah. Anytime in the early game, burgeoning uh, just gets you to your late game much faster than... Than anything else. Uh, however, late game draw burgeoning is is not great. Not great unless you're able to like get a lot of card draw in general, so that you have lands in hand to put down as opponents play lands. Uh, this this card ends up dying a lot of the time. Mm -hmm. it, it starts good and then it dies. Yeah, exactly. And we watch it. We watch that happen. And then it just becomes a non thing. But it's okay because like we like having turn one plays in commander that are actually that actually benefit for the rest of the game like burgeoning does. So there's a trade off there, right? Like the, the ceiling is high, but the floor is, is also can also be fairly low. And we all know about the floor of a magic card. Um, I, I'm going to kind of blow through these next two because they're just kind of staples and they're, they're, they're quick uh, explosive vegetation. It's another card. We, we always talk about uh, uh is reach and, um, and cultivate, but explosive vegetation is another one. Don't forget about it. Three, three and a green for sorcery. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tapped. Shelf your library. So for so for one extra than those other two cards, you just get to put that extra. You just get to put that right out onto the battlefield, right? Instead of keeping one of them in your hand. Yeah. Uh, explosive vegetation is great. It was we, we saw it like kind of spike in price a little bit when it was in standard. People were playing it. Uh, it's no longer in standard. Am I right? Yes. It's not, and um, so therefore it's it's gone right down. It's under a dollar. It's it's great. Explosive uh, veggies. Explosive veggies, and then we have Harrow also. So Harrow is two and a green for an instant that says, in additional cost, you have to sacrifice a land, but then you search for two lands and put them into play. They're not tapped. Two basic mm -hmm. lands, basic lands. So it ramps you by one, but it actually kind of gives you a little bit of a rebate on your mana. So it's it's really great. Harrow's awesome. Oh, great. Uh, I love this next one. Uh, Drum Hunter. Three and a green for a human druid warrior creature that's 2-2. Two, two. So it's a little bit over cost for a 2-2. Two, two. However, it has the ability to tap, add one to your mana pool. On a fundamental sort of basic level, this is a mana ramp creature. It lets you do more things. However, there's a paragraph I've skipped up until this point that <laughs> reads, At the beginning of your end step, if you control a creature with power five or greater, you may draw a card. Great. That's... You know, that's something that like, you know, I could see that and be like, OK, I know that this is going to get me extra cards. Uh, and if it isn't, I bet you that extra mana will help me cast something that will get me extra cards. Very simple, very easy to understand. And it's a basic function. It takes advantage of the big creatures and it ramps us. Uh, great Naya card. Great Naya card. This is like and I believe it was. Yeah, it's from Shards of Alara. So this is very much a Naya card. Usually mm -hmm. when cards reference a creature with power five or greater, they're from that block. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, that, that's what that means. So and and yeah, Drum Hunter is great. The amazing part of Drum Hunter, you get that card on your end step, so you get it that turn, um, unless someone removes it or something. Uh, this is a card that we've been hyping up as of late. I still have yet to cast this myself. Wow. But it's really, really great. Uh, Life Crafters Bestiary. It's three generic for an artifact. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, scry one, which is always nice. That's like pseudo card draw. It's like half of a card. And then whenever you cast a creature spell, you may pay green. If you do, draw a card. So then you just get to straight up draw a card for one extra green, which is... Super easy, especially if you've been ramping, which is something that Naya does very easily. Anything yeah. with green in it does pretty easily, I, I guess. So this card is great in a basic strategy, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, it asks a little bit more of our user to know to be able to predict like whether or not they want that card for a scry. Give them options, but I think it's a fun. It's just a fun way to get involved. Uh, we'll see if this this is made the Sultai basics, the Naya basics. We'll see if it makes other green basics. I, I like how the, the life I've never really noticed this before, but it looks like the Life Crafters Bestiary is basically a Pokédex. Oh yeah, yeah, it's a Pokédex. Yeah, for yeah, sure. That's pretty cool. Yeah, <laughs> gotta catch them all. Yeah, right. Like, yeah, that's what it's doing. Anyways, uh, so we'll move on to a card called Mentor of the Meek, two and a white, two two human soldier. Whenever another creature with power two or less enters the battlefield under your control, you may pay one generic. If you do, draw a card. It's a neat balance in the deck of like, so as we mentioned, Drum Hunter does have two power. So Drum Hunter helps us get to our big things. And while we're doing that, Mentor of the Meek uses Drum Hunter to help us draw cards. This is a great balance between the two halves of the deck. This is actually, if a deck doesn't have blue, drawing cards can be tricky. But Mentor of the Meek is so wonderful because while we cast our little things, we're drawing extra cards off of them which hopefully they are lands and big creatures to cast later on. And you'll see that uh, a lot of our, some of our big creatures will actually create smaller creatures. So there you go. Mentor and um, Drum Hunter kind of end up working side by side a, a little bit. It's interesting. But this yeah, is one it's of the all great... totally scalable. Yeah, totally. And this is one of the great things white brings to the deck, right? It's it's this is like this is good enough to include in this in this deck because it is such a strong and reliable version of card draw. When you're dealing with tokens, um, okay. So then, th- these next two are are very similar cards. We have Garrick's Pack Leader, and we also have Elemental Bond. Uh, Elemental Bond's the enchantment version that's an auto May, and it's for two and a green. And Garrick's Pack Leader is for four and a green, and it's a creature. It's a four four beast. Basically, they both say whenever another creature with power three or greater enters the battlefield, uh, you may draw a card. It's under your control, right? Yeah. There is another. There's even another version of this where it's. Uh, three, three or more that anyone controls, and then like they draw a card. Anyway, anyways, but Garrick's Pack Leader and Elemental Bond. Now we're talking about creatures that are two or less. We're talking about creatures five or more. Well, why not count the creatures that are three or greater? Also, like why not just co- close that gap and let us draw so many cards from every kind of creature? So sure. <laughs> Garrick's Pack Leader and Elemental Bond do a really great job of that. And this is just gonna. With this and Mentor of the Meek, you're going to draw a card essentially from like every creature that comes, no matter what they are, right? So it's, it's, the, these are, this is how green draws cards. And we know that white and red have real trouble drawing cards. So we kind of, they have to lean on green for, for that. And especially since that this is the token and again, the, the five or more power thing, that's the way green wants to draw cards. So that, that's just how we're, we're going to do it. Well, here's another way Green's going to draw us a bunch of cards. Uh, let's start with Regal Force. Four green, green, green for an elemental that's 5-5. Five, five. There's that magic number that's going to show up. Whenever When Regal Force enters the battlefield, draw a card for each green creature you control. And let's remember that uh, Marath uh, makes green elemental creature tokens. Mm-hmm. So if you if you already have Marath, you can make a bunch of tokens in advance of Regal Force. Uh, and then similarly, Shamanic Revelation, three green, green. Sorcery, draw a card for each creature you control. It doesn't matter what color it is. And then Ferocious, you gain four life for each creature you control with power four or greater. Again, that applies to some of our creatures, not all of them, but you get to, having this in your hand, you get to kind of sculpt your gameplay towards however the deck's treating you. Shamanic Revelation specifically is a crazy Naya card because it's it's great for tokens. It's also great if you have just four, three or four big creatures because then you also gain like, I don't know, 16, 20 life off of it also, which... That's a lot of life. It's a nice thing to tack on to a card draw card, right? Like, it, it, it's like in Limited, where, like, you're playing with... Life gain's not a big deal. Like, you're not going to play a card that's just a life gain card. But 
when you tack it on to something that's real, like like a like a multiple card draw spell, then you're like, oh yeah, sure, no problem. I'll take that. I'll take that sixteen to twenty life, whatever it is. No problemo. No problemo. So uh, you can see that there's a real two sides of the coin thing happening here with Naya and trying to bridge them all um, is 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 a little bit is a little bit difficult uh, when you're talking about synergy. But this deck isn't so much about synergy as it is about basics. And if there's something that Naya does that's pretty basic, it's it's that it has the best non-creature destruction. Naya handles. Yep anything that's not a creature very easily uh i've highlighted a couple uh let's 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 start here um first is uh my own my own namesake hull breach huh uh it's red and a green for a sorcery that says choose one destroy target artifact or destroy target enchantment or both basically so you're almost always going to choose to destroy both if you can um uh, this card's great for a two mana and one card. You get to kill two things. Like that's just the value that green, red, and white are going to tack on together. Uh, Sean, another example is this next one. Uh, my namesake, Tiberis Breach. No, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was thinking about that after you made that joke. What Tiberis Breach would be? It would destroy all bubbles in pop. <laughs> what do you not like? You like a flat pop there? I prefer a flat pop. What really? I do. I was just saying that as a burn. I thought that was not even going to be real. There's no way that could be real. I like a flat pop. You have I, a soda stream, though. I do. I, I don't use it. I, I only go a couple on it. I don't I don't go the full blast. Oh, wow. This is new. I thought you were a real pop aficionado. I am. Like, I, 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 I'm I, thought an you were, I thought you were because you liked... The bubbles. I thought you were like a bubble. I like man. some bubbles. I shouldn't say I like purely flat pop, but I, I always like to put it over ice so I can just kill some of the bubbles. Oh wow, bizarre! Give me all <laughs> the bubbles. Give me more bubbles. Okay, you can have my bubbles, Andy. <laughs> okay, great, love it. Great partnership. Uh, next actual magic card uh, we're talking about is wear and tear. It's got fuse. It's one of those split cards. So the wear is an instant for one and a red destroy target artifact. Tear is an instant for a single white destroy target enchantment. And if you want to spend three mana on the whole thing, you can do both. Great. That's the kind of flexibility we want in a magic card. I love it. Yep. Uh, very solid. A lot of value there. Uh, that's, similar... that's, that's another one where we can destroy two things. Yeah, exactly. And here's, here's another one. Slightly different, but uh, still very powerful. Decimate. It's two red green. It's a sorcery. Destroy target artifact, target creature, target enchantment, and target land. So great. This is a f- potential four for one. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's not always going to be a four for one because sometimes you have to target something that's indestructible, which I've done many times. If someone has a god out and there's no enchantments, it's like, well, at least I can cast it. Because the thing with Decimate is you have to have four legal targets for this. Yeah. You can't just cast it if there's only two or one or whatever. Not allowed. Um, so that is a downside, right? Uh, s- sometimes, but usually you will be able to pick four things and and have it just be uh, an amazing, uh, amazing card to play. And like uh, I said, you know, Naya is very good at non-creature destruction. Well, this one even hits a creature, which is great. Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Okay, moving forward. Uh, here's another way to exile two artifacts or enchantments. Uh, we've got Sylvan Reclamation. You can team this three... team this one up with uh, this one here too, by the way. Oh sure, yeah. So there's another two for one kind of deal here. Yeah. Uh, for five mana, green white three, exile up to two target artifacts and or enchantments. Right. So you can mix and match. You get a two of one. We love it. It also has the bonus of basic land cycling. So for two generic, if we don't need that destruction early, but we need a mountain, we can go two to up a mountain. Yeah, it's great. And then you can read the other one. Yeah, too. sure. Return to Dust is basically the same thing. Uh, two white, white for an instant. Exile target artifact or enchantment. But if you cast the spell during your main phase, you may exile up to one other target art- artifact or enchantment. So it is technically an instant, but if you use it at instant speed, you only get one. That's a great option to have. Uh, but oftentimes we don't necessarily need to do that, and we can wait till our main phase and get two out of it for the price of one. Yep, the two awesome cards. Like you're noticing that a lot of these are two for ones, or even in Decimate's case, a four for one, and that's that's why Naya is so good at it. Some of the other 
some of the other things you'll find like the mono red version of it or the mono green version of it or for example something like crows and grip great card um uh but it, it hits one thing only right and it's i mean crows and grip specifically is like very good because it has split second but but that's real value is uh, naya has cards that hit two three four things at once which is really really great uh, but do we have creature answers? We still need those too. We're talking about answers. We're talking about ways to deal with things. Uh, yeah, Naya has a pretty decent grasp on that too. Mostly because we get answer, we get uh, uh, access to all of the white removal. Now it is mostly white. There's not a lot of mixed colors with Naya, but but just that's what the color you know this, this sort of color pie brings to us. So we get something like sorts of plowshares. Uh, yeah, we get a lot of board wipes like uh, fumigate. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to read swords. We all know what swords does. Uh, mm -hmm. Fumigate is the board is a five mana board wipe that when you destroy everything, it also gains one life for each creature destroyed this way. Um, uh, and I wanted to talk about this one, uh, Gruel Rage Beast. This is an interesting answer for creatures. It's five red green. Uh, it's a beast. It's a six six, and it says whenever Gruel Rage Beast or another creature enters the battlefield under your control. That creature fights target creature and opponent controls. It's not a oh, man. Yeah. It has to fight. But when we're talking about a deck with big beast creatures, this guy's great. Now, if you're tokens don't work well with cruel rage beast, so it's kind of like a it's like, you know, do I play this? Do I not play this? It depends on what you see in your hand. So you're gonna have to make yeah. that decision. But this card can be this card can really like control the board in a way that uh Naya doesn't usually get to do. So Gruel Rage Beast can be a real, a real boon. Huh. Great. Uh, let's move to uh... Fell the Mighty. Yeah, Fell the Mighty is a great like. So this is another sort. Is this a board wipe? Yes, it is. It's, yeah. It depends how you want to look at it. It's four and a white for a sorcery. Destroy all creatures with power greater than target creature's power. So here's where you get a bit of selection. Like if, if you, if you're going the small route, you can use this to kill everything bigger than your small stuff and keep your small stuff. Uh, or if you need that wrath, you can try to hopefully find a zero powered thing that's still on the battlefield and just get rid of everything. Uh, except all the other zero powered things. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it's, it's honestly not that hard to find a zero power thing. Some of the time, it's also definitely not hard to find a one power thing. Uh, well, so especially with Morath. Exactly. So if you want this to be like a, just a classic board wipe, it can be. I think this card is like very underrated. I've I've included it in in I think only just like one deck, but every time I've used it, I'm always amazed at the flexibility you get out of it. Uh, you can often uh, uh, make it so that this board wipe is a, basically a one sided board wipe. Again, depending on what type, what what your board state looks like, obviously, but you get to decide what of your stuff you're going to keep and what of your stuff, you're, what of your opponent's stuff you're going to hit. Essentially, um, there's a card called Austere Command. Uh, yeah, which is not a, cheap, not cheap, uh, but a very solid card for commander. It's like a ten dollar card. It lets you uh, modally pick, and one of the things is that you get to pick uh, converted mana cost three or less, or f or four or more, or you can just do both. Well. Fell the Mighty is a very similar card, honestly. It doesn't hit artifacts and enchantments, which is one of the great things about Austere Command, but, but Fell the Mighty, as far as board wipes go, it's actually really great for that. So you can save half of your team while destroying everyone else's stuff, or you can save even one specific creature and have it destroy a lot of your opponent's stuff. So I think, uh, I don't know, this one kind of quietly slipped into Commander, and I don't see it run ever, but I think this card's really good. Agreed. And it's like a, it's kind of like a budget... You know, I imitation of of austere command. Yeah, that's a great way to look at it. Uh, and finally, for board wipes, uh, uh, exiling is always better than destroying. Uh, so descend upon the sinful, and there's other cards that are of its ilk. But descend upon the sinful is probably the best one. It's four and two white for sorcery. Exile all creatures, and if you have delirium, you get you afterwards you get to put out a four four white angel creature token with flying. So there you go. Exiling all the creatures is just always going to be better. No one can bring it back and stuff like that. Obviously. Decent. So, cool. So let's talk about some finishers, right? Like these are the fundamentals. We're going to need to answer some things. We're going to need to like get ourselves set up. But once we do get set up, how do we close out the game? Uh, man, not many stronger finishers than uh, Gisela Blade of Gold Knight. Four, red, white, white, legendary angel, five, five, flying and first strike. 
that's all pretty great. Maybe a little overcosted for seven, but if a source would deal damage to an opponent or a permanent an opponent controls, that source deals double damage to that player or permanent instead. Yikes. If a source would deal damage to you or a permanent you control, prevent half that damage, round it up. Oh boy, this is difficult. Uh, <laughs> whenever you face down this card, uh, it's very things get very depressing. Yeah. Because they can hit you so like I'll speak to us as if we are the controller of Gisela. You can hit people so hard with your stuff and they can hit each other so hard if they want to, but they can barely touch you. It will be almost pointless. Oh yeah. Especially since if you, you, you just can't kill Gisela with, with creature combat. You just can't. You just can't. Cause she has she's first got first strike. strike. She is, so she's basically like a 10, 10 with first strike. Basically, yeah, she's right? going to do 10 power worth of damage to you on first strike. And, you and then you have to be able to do 10 back to, to do the back. five required. Right? Like, so really, if you if you want to hit her back, like, your creature needs to be... 10, 11. 20? Like, or at least, no, more, yeah, a 10, 11. Yeah, exactly. 10, 11 will win in combat. Strike. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. so it, it's just a tall order. It's it, basically next to impossible to kill her with creature combat. So you do have to, you're going to have to aim something at her. Um, She's a touch outside of our budget, uh, but such a strong finish. She's like a, she's a six dollar card. We we fit her in when when it makes sense, and I think I mean if you're talking yeah. Naya, we're talking about big splashy creatures, five or more powers of bonus, so she has that. Yeah. So she's and whether or not you're going like if you have Marath and you're looking to make little tokens, then those tokens hit way harder. Marath's deck direct damage does double. Even if you're going the Gahiji route and just asking the cards to do their thing, Gahiji just makes you do plus four plus O effectively on all your creatures. It's quite nice. Light and like Gahiji, Gisela does. Um, I mean, she doesn't. She doesn't. She he, encourages your opponents to attack each other because they'll get the, mm-hmm. the damage doubling. Uh, but also, obviously, they probably want to swing at you because you have Gisela, and she's very intimidating. Yeah, that's the move. Uh, another finisher on the other side of things when it comes to uh, uh, just a lot of small creatures is Titanic Ultimatum. Although, actually, Gisela is great for any side, actually. But uh, Titanic Ultimatum. This is a very fun card. I had this card played against me once, and I was like, I'm never not including that in a Naya deck. <laughs> it's red, red, green, 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 white, white. So seven mana total. Uh, it's a sorcery. It says until end of turn, creatures you control get plus five plus five and gain first strike, life link, and trample. Uh, the reason uh, so this card is obviously just like a very big splashy overrun, um, uh, almost like a win more version of overrun because it's just like it's overkill. You, plus five plus five and all that extra stuff. But the here's the one here's here's the reason I always include titanic ultimatum in I, I would always include it in like a token deck that has these colors is because you can be um, i've seen this happen where you're basically dead you're out of the game you've got five tokens lying around which is not going to be enough to stop their flyers so you go well okay i guess i'll just attack someone i guess i'll attack you okay i'm at let's say the guy you're attacking is even like okay i'm the only one open but i'm open because i got like 60 life or something it's like okay sure i'll block one or two of them whatever you not only get to like hit that guy hard with damage because now you got plus five plus five trample first strike. Your creatures aren't going to die probably because they have first strike, but that life link is crazy. You're going to gain so much life. That's just like four or five. You're going to gain twenty life. You're going to be back in the game. You're going to be able to su- now start to survive extra turns and 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 live. I I, I remember distinctly, Sean, a uh, 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 guy we used to play with, Nick played this card on us once when we thought he was we thought he was out of the game for sure and titanic ultimatum brought him right back into it and uh right back and that's that's great we're often very behind in commander so titanic ultimatum is a nice it does double duty it's a lot to cast it's kind of a harder card to cast but it's it's awesome great let's move on to another big old finisher uh angel of serenity for uh green sorry for white 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 angel five six flying power five i will point out when Angel of Serenity enters the battlefield, you may exile up to three other target creatures from the battlefield and or creature cards from graveyards. And when Angel of Serenity leaves the battlefield, return those cards to their owner's hands. So this is, on the surface, I think 
to a if a player was not experienced with Angel of Serenity, your first instinct would be to get three creatures off the battlefield that your opponents control that are offensive, that are kind of bothering you. That's the easy first step to it. But there's a lot of room to learn. I love this card from that point of view mm -hmm. because it's it's obvious what it's good at to any player. But as you learn the game and as you start to look at synergies, you're like, oh, wait a minute. I can put one of my creatures under the angel, as it were, if as protection from future board wipes, just to be like insurance. And then you get to think like, well, I can also do stuff from my own graveyard to get that back when something happens to the angel. You can start to expand how you think of this. But even on a surface, it's just a powerful flyer that does a lot of damage. It it deals with opponents creatures a lot. Good card. Great card. It's really fun to nail down a uh, an Angel of Serenity when someone has a Nev's Disc in play. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just take three cards from your graveyard and put them under her, and you're like, what are you going to do, man? <laughs> what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Uh, uh, finally, uh, f I mean, Naya is, is, is no stranger when it comes to big finishers, so it's actually kind of hard to to pick the ones I wanted to talk about from the deck, but Dragon Lord of Tark is another huge one. Uh, five red green for legendary Elder Dragon. Uh, it's an 8-8 eight, eight with Flying and Trample. And it says when Dragon Lord of Tark enters the battlefield, it deals five damage divided as you choose among any number of target creatures and or Planeswalkers your opponents control. Um, so it's again, for a newer player, it's simple. This guy, this big fat monster dragon comes in, he deals five damage, wherever it wants basically uh and that's it. it they don't need to worry about it only it, it's only opponents because they're only thinking about that anyways whereas like a more advanced player might actually occasionally want to hit his own creatures for some reason with this but you can't actually with dragon lord atarka but that doesn't matter because he's there to end the game and an 8-8 flying trample that also probably takes out a, a, a flyer or two or whatever as it lands is game ending even in commander yep yeah Dragonlord Atarka, solid. It's a card I never think of for some reason. I don't know. I, the Dragon Lords, I don't. They're not in my head. I, maybe because I'm always like these guys are way out of budget because they were obviously when they were in standard, but they've since dropped a bit in price. Dragonlord Atarka is still about four bucks, but um, yeah, great cards. Great cards. Now it is a Naya deck. Yes. So we're talking about: Are we doing tokens? Are we doing big creatures? Are we doing plus one, plus one counters, which we haven't really talked about a lot lately, or yeah. yet? This deck's not super heavy on them, but Merith does that can use them and 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 stuff like that. So yeah. So we're going to talk about a couple cards that are a little bit more synergistic. That are cards that maybe not necessarily do things on their own. That do need some support of other cards in the deck, but it should be obvious where that support's coming from. Uh, the first one's Anointed Procession. We're all very excited about this. Uh, it's the cheap parallel lives, basically. Although it's not that cheap. It's almost five bucks. It's getting right up Three and a white enchantment. If an effect would create one or more tokens under your control, it creates twice that many of those tokens instead. Right? You have this down, and any player knows, like, aha, I see what I must do. I must make more tokens. No problem. Yeah, uh, same thing goes for Hardened Scales. It's one, it's a one, uh, an enchantment for one green. If one or more 1-1 one, one counters will be placed on a creature you control, you just add one more to that. Um, same thing. You see this plus one, plus one counters thing. You look at Marath and you go, oh, if I put one on a creature, it gets one more than that also. Neat. Uh, it encourages you to use that strategy. Also, I mean, this might not be, this is why Marath may not be the beginner's version of the deck is because like uh, also Hardened Scales works just with Marath and that you can target Marath with its own ability and add counters to itself, which is like, Okay, now you're getting tricky, but um, but Hardened Scales is just a great, 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 great card for plus one, plus one counter strategies, which any deck you running Marath is going to use. Yeah, right? Um, so if you're running the Gahiji, maybe that's a cut. Maybe you find another combat-based one. But uh, in any case, it works great with Cathar's Crusade, three white, white, and enchantment. Whenever a creature enters a battlefield under your control, put a plus one, plus one counter on each creature you control. This card, like, every time I see it in action, I'm just like, wow, I can't believe they printed this. This is enormous. Uh, making multiple small creatures results in 
massive, massive armies. It is almost arguable that this is not a basic card because it's so hard to keep track of everyone's <laughs> plus one plus encounters. You need so many GD dice when this yeah. hits the table. I'd say it's not exactly a again like a not exactly a beginner's version of the t- card, but this is just I just wanted to include these two for if there's some plus one plus one synergies which Naya does work with from time to time. These are two just automatic includes you're gonna want. Yeah. Um, but speaking of the, so like, let's go like more Naya, what we got going on here, which is the, which is the big power and the tokens. But if we're talking about big power, we're talking about Rake Claw, Rake Claw Gargantuan, two red, green, white. It's our first full actual Naya card. Uh, this is actually a, a common, um, but it's a five, three, but for one generic, you can, uh, you can pay one generic and give target creature with power five or greater first strike until end of turn. Which, like, doesn't sound like that big of a deal, but when you're when you're playing when you have an eight eight like trampler and someone wants to just team block it, well, it's like, well, now you can't. So it can't just makes it. it even worse. Or like, I've got a you know I've got a five five, and it's like, oh, I'll block it with you can't block it with a death toucher anymore. Uh, you know, I'm gonna trade with my five five. Well, now it doesn't do that anymore. Like all the reasons for a strike are good. Um, they kind of even get better as the creature gets larger. So I actually really like Rake Claw Gargantuan in those decks. It's it's I don't know. It's it's an onboard it's an onboard trick people see coming, but it's just a, a threat of activation will will get you will get you far with that one. I'm also a big fan of his super tiny head. <laughs> yeah, he does have a super tiny head. Uh, his uh, bi- his bigger brother though is also pretty cool. Oh, this, you mean the Spear Breaker Behemoth? That's right. Uh, five green green for a 5-5 five, five beast. Spear Breaker Behemoth is indestructible, period. Uh, and for one generic, target creature with power 5 or greater is indestructible this turn. Well, now we're talking. Like, we've got a number of 5-5s five we've already talked about. And if Spear Breaker hits the battlefield, if you save up a little bit of mana, you can guarantee their survival through most board wipes. Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, one man is nothing to pay to to save your five or six gigantic monsters. You pay one for each of those. You're you're laughing when someone tries to board wipe. So it's just going to deter that, which in turn helps your other creatures stay alive too, because they're going to say like, "Oh, I don't, I don't even take care of this guy's scariest stuff." And the beauty thing is, so with Rayclog or Gantuan, you would have to pay the one to give itself for strike, but you don't have to do that for Spearbreaker Behemoth. Yeah, weird. It's just already indestructible. They're f- I don't mind that. I think they're from the same set too. Rayclog should they come are. with first strike then. It, natively. You'd think it would, right? Isn't that weird? Yeah. Anyways. Uh yeah. Uh just two more here as far as uh Synergies go. This one's neat. Uh, Godsire. Four. Okay. Red. Oh, sorry. I thought... I don't yeah. have Godsire in my tabs. No, right. I added it. Godsire is four red, green, green, white. It's a, it's a beast. It has vigilance. It's an 8-8. Eight, eight. This one's a little pricey. It's up, up in like the $5 range. But I just had to include it because it's a giant monster that makes a token. That's a giant monster. So it's like doubly Naya, right? It's also another true Naya card. Um, the the eight eight beast that you you tap to put out a, a um, not a copy of it but an, an eight eight beast creature token that's red green and white, so then obviously you're talking about anointed procession makes another one and yeah this card just gets really this card just gets bonkers because it it can attack without tapping and then making it it also oh, gets yeah, to make another vigilant. one it gets yeah. to make an eight eight very very cool um, again a little oh, bit pricey then- but it's 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 solid. And I want to talk about Fires of Yavimai. One red-green for an enchantment, and the creatures you control have haste. That's great when we're dropping big creatures or massive armies of little creatures. Having them all have haste is fantastic. And if it comes up, uh, you can sacrifice Fires of Yavimai for target creature to get plus two, plus two until end of turn. That's... I feel like on the surface, that's an ability that won't come up much. I feel like beginner players will use this at the wrong time most (laughs) of the time. Uh, I think we'll value one creature's surviving versus everyone having haste. But either way, you you learn how you play, right? Like uh, it's it's fun either way. Yeah, it's definitely mostly in there just to illustrate the fact that um, it, well, this is a red green card. But this is but the green side of it is the sacrificing, giving, and pumping something, whereas the red side of it is obviously the creatures get haste. Uh, Naya is almost more of a of a of a sum of its parts type deck where it's like. Uh, or shard rather 
whereas like each color individually brings things and then they just kind of get mashed together. Whereas Saltai, it's like blue and black use the graveyard. Blue, you know, blue fills the graveyard. Black brings it back out, you know. Uh, green, green, the same thing. Green and black love to mess with the graveyard, right? Um, whereas like Naya is like white makes small tokens. Uh, green, green uh, like uh, makes small tokens. I guess they, and, and then like, but like white does it itself. It pumps the tokens in. It makes them. It's like, well, fine. Green makes big giant creatures. Uh, okay, uh, then I'll, I guess red will give them haste sometimes, or like let you hit, like that you deal damage with them somehow. So like, it's not quite as synergistic as I think like like Saltai was, but but together they can they can sometimes make something. Although it's kind of like a bit of a monstrosity as you're seeing. Uh, yeah, so it's like it's not like it's like chocolate and peanut butter, but then chocolate and peanut butter and salt we are just like <laughs> salt salt and chocolate's pretty good but it's like I don't know, does it go with peanut butter? i guess it also does never does, mind that's a bad yeah. example yeah it's less that's what salt is like that's salt eye salt eye is is a good peanut butter cup <laughs> yeah whereas yeah if, naya is like a salad <laughs> naya is like lettuce tomato and like a dressing it's like ranch they're all kind of like good on their own and you know they sort of come together but it's like whatever I, I don't i don't know i don't need lettuce i can have anything i don't need tomato i could have a bunch of other stuff i don't know i don't know if that actually makes sense but no it doesn't make sense doesn't, doesn't make, make any sense, sense to me uh anyways whatever naya is the salad live with it uh three stars of the deck so in this deck it's more about um pointing out like where we're getting a lot of value from uh, how we're how we're using the cards that are in here to like kind of pull the whole thing together, um, as opposed to like what just is straight up the best card. So uh, tried to pick some stuff from like as a swath kind of across, but I ended up actually accidentally picking two cards that are kind of similar. But uh, let's start with number three here. Uh, it's Olvenwald Hydra, uh, four green green. Uh, it's a creature. It's a Hydra. It's a star star creature. It has reach. And its power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands you control. Uh, ramp is a big thing with Naya, so we're going to get a lot of uh, lands out there. Um, but when it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a land card, put it onto the battlefield, tap, then shuffle your library. I just think it's... Uh, I Basically, I, I was going to include Sun Titan here, which I think is a great, obviously, a, a great card. We talk about it a lot. Um, but that actually made me remember that, like, oh, I wish we had Primeval Titan. Oh, we... Do kind of have a primeval titan, but it's Olvenwald Hydra. Uh, yeah. So I just thought I would include this because it's an overlooked card a lot. It does a lot. It does some cool things that uh, you know. It, it helps you ramp. It's a big monster. It has reach, which is like kind of a fun added ability. Um, so I just thought it was like a, a neat Naya card that we tend to overlook. Uh, number two uh, star. Uh, this guy's an all star. Avenger of Zendikar. Five green green for an elemental. That's five five. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 0-1 plant for each land you control. Here's the Naya small token strategy at play. And on top of that, it has landfall. Whenever a land enters the battlefield under your control, you get to put a plus and plus encounter on each one of those plants. We're doing counters. We're doing mini tokens. Avenger is a five power creature to begin with. So yeah. Avenger falls under all of that part of Naya. Yeah, Avenger fits on all parts of the pie chart here. Yeah, so there are a couple of these creatures that bring together these different things. The Avenger Zenicar deals with plus one, plus one counters. It makes tokens. It itself is a 5-5. Five, five. Like, it really em embodies all the different strategies that Naya has and brings them together uh, on one card. Uh, so you're obviously getting a lot of good value there. Uh, and the number one star, and I think we've included this in a lot, and I don't know... I don't know if it's been number one before, though. It must have. War Storm Surge. This card is great. Five and a red for an enchantment. You know it. We talk about it a lot. Whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power. Sorry, equal to its power to target creature or player. So whenever a creature comes in, you just get that amount of damage to shoot around somewhere, whatever that creature's power is. This card works equally well, I think, in token strategies as well as big monster creature strategies. I have this card in my L the Anima. I also have it in uh, my 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 uh, Marath deck, which is an all, all tokens deck. So whether it's dealing one 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 or whether it's dealing ten, you know, like it's so good, it's great. So Warstorm Surge is amazing, and it really 
it's the best red card that that works with like we're saying like the different parts of the strategy so um yeah war storm surge is just great undeniably great undeniably any surprises or discoveries about Naya? Any of that sort of thing? It's no, hard in a basic deck, right? Yeah, There's really no surprises in that area. It's tough in these. I mean, uh, I don't know. Uh, if if we're t- newer players are going to be surprised by lots of stuff, obviously, but um, they might find something like you know, I don't know. I I didn't find anything new just because we're we're sort of retreading a lot of yeah, stuff we've done in the, the past about these and basic tying decks. it all together, right? So yeah. Yeah, that's, that's going to really happen. Nothing new here. Uh, but we can, what is not new is mentioning the Wizards Tower, wizardtower.com. Uh, yeah, this is, before we do the budget report, we're going to talk about uh, our sponsor. This is a great place to buy cards. And if you're looking to buy a bunch of cards, uh, as we mentioned, right, um, they're shipping to Canada for free shipping, $15 or less. Uh, no longer shipping to the United States for free directly, but... I say look it up anyway. Do the math, right? Do the test of like see what it would cost you in USD and see if the conversion to Canada, Canadian dollars doesn't save you money even if you have to pay for shipping. I bet you your dollar is enough stronger than ours that it still is like free shipping for you. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's very true. Uh, Yeah, so check it out. WizardTower.com. Also MTGCanada.com where we write articles. For articles. Yeah. Uh, at the time you're listening to this, I believe my latest article would have been up. That's true. <laughs> so check it out. Yeah. Uh, Sean's not sure what it's going to be yet. <laughs> I got ideas. Okay. He's got some ideas. Okay. You know, it's not spoiling it now because it would have already been up by the time they actually hear this. I mean, I know we're in the past, but they're in the future. Yeah. I just don't want someone to come back and kill me. Oh, yeah. Okay. And just <laughs> so ne- I can't talk about the future. Make it so that that never existed. Yeah. Uh, okay, so it's time for the budget report. We take all the cards and look at them from a fundamentals basic point of view. Uh, what are they made of? Can they help us grow carrots at our farm or mill the wheat? If so, they're in. If they want to go to the big city and be all fancy, they're out. <laughs> so like being a farmer is basic? Is that what you're saying? I think so. Okay. I mean, I'm sure it's very complex. The farming industry has a lot of nuances that I yeah. a, I do not I'm not aware of. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess I'm making an assumption there. Um, so th- the way I approach this deck, the 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 budget for the actual deck, um, the one that I built ca- came in just under fifty dollars. It's around like forty eight, uh, forty eight dollars or so, forty nine dollars. But you, it's such a fluid sort of idea of a deck that you could really trade in and out lots of different parts, right? Like you probably would want to either pick tokens or big creatures. I I don't really know if you'd want to try and mix both. Although, like we said, Gaiji does do a decent job of doing that. And there are some, there are some cards that are synergistic with this, but um, yeah, so you you have to take a look at it yourself Uh, as it stands. uh, The number one, most expensive card in the deck is Gisela. Uh, she is six dollars US right now. Um, uh, you can find you can also get her for like five, five something. Uh, but yeah, she's around five or six bucks. So it's getting up there. She's a great card, but uh, you know, depending on what you want to do with the deck, you might want to take her out. I think she's worth it because that's such a powerful ability, and it just you don't find that often. I, that I, I think she's worth it, but I could understand if you wanted to cut it. It's legit finisher. The next most expensive card is Anointed Procession. Uh, that's the one, the white enchantment that makes double the tokens. That one's pushing five bucks. I think that's because it's in standard right now. I hope it'll drop when it rotates. I don't know. I, man, uh, I don't think it, so. I think it's expensive because it's... Commander players, yeah, right? We're just I scooping we're them doing up. It. I think we are doing it. This is... It's Parallel Lives in white. It's like... Yeah, we want it. It's even... It's arguably better than Parallel Lives. Like... Yeah, it's you know? in a better color for it. And like, so and here's another example, right? Like, if your brew of the deck goes less tokens, more big guys, then this is an easy cut. If you go more lo- tokens, less big guys, this is an easy keep. It's up to you. And the same goes for the third most expensive card, Dragonlord Atarka, coming in at uh, just over four bucks. Like I said, a little expensive. And obviously, if you're going for the token route, this guy is probably not something you're going to include. But if we're talking big, balmy, splashy, high power stuff and crit high power toughness creatures uh dragon lord of tark is is the guy you want to include he's good 
but otherwise all right. it's a cut. And so new new subject to the show is our out of budget section. We're going to talk about some cards that are like over our typical five dollar budget, but are great in the deck specifically. Normally, our approach here would be we would try to avoid generally awesome non budget cards because that's too obvious. We would try to focus on cards that are generally awesome in this deck. I guess it's not general. They're specifically awesome in this deck and also out of budget. But in this case, there's some overlap. Like, arguably, the first one we're going to highlight is Crater Hoof Behemoth. We know him. He's a classic. Five, green, green, green. Five, five with haste. There's that five again. Whenever Crater Hoof, when Crater Hoof Behemoth enters the battlefield, creatures you control gain trample and plus X plus X, where X is the number of creatures you control, right? This is the number one big team finisher, right? This is where how you're going to get hoofed. Uh, it's yeah. going to make your team ginormous, and it's going to finish off the game most reliably. Uh, this, while y- yes, this is a generally pretty great card, you are going to find this in token decks mostly. Um, although that being said, yeah. he, he does work fairly well in the big boys deck as well because you can you get even if you had three creatures and you put him out, that's still plus four with trample with those right. big guys. It can it can all even out. But um, crater hoof. And if you some go ahead. If you somehow had any mana left over after casting them, now all those cards that care about five power creatures now apply to every little thing you have. True. That's possible. Uh, I will say this, though. I just kind of wanted to say Crater Hoof Behemoth on the show because I don't know if we ever have before. I don't know if we have or it's not. It's just so strongly out of budget. It's We're talking about a $10, $15 card here that we don't get to brew with. And, you know, we're the, the out of budget category is still pretty new to the show, so... Let's you know. Let's mention Crater Hoof. We have to, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, but the, obviously, obviously, he goes into the deck. Uh, obviously, this one is uh, interesting. This is a, a like at one point a staple. I'm not even sure if it is anymore, but uh, definitely great in this deck. It's three green and a white for Marari's Wake. It's an enchantment. Creatures you control get plus one plus one, and whenever you tap a land for mana, you can add one to your mana pool of any type of that land produced. So it's a mana doubler, it's an anthem, it's exactly what you want in a token deck. This also obviously just is just great, just because of the simple fact it's a mana doubler, it's worth it. Uh, And when you are casting creatures that are five power or greater, they usually cost five mana or greater. And when you want to do that, obviously you want a lot of mana lying around. So Mari's Wake is great. And it's about, um, yeah, man, even the the conspiracy version is like $12. Yeah. Pricey. Yep. Uh, and then one other card that just like it's it's Oof. not as pricey. It's the cheapest ever pricey. But like what a what a useful card. Uh, Aura shards. One green white enchantment. Whenever a creature is in the field under your control, you may trigger an artifact or enchantment. Holy business! This one like if you can make little tokens, no enchantment or artifact is gonna be around after this is there. I almost feel for like balance sake it should have read it shouldn't be a may like for, I, I for balance of, yeah i agree it should be yeah i agree because then at least uh, eventually it has to destroy itself yeah right so ev- eventually right if 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 the create if the player with our shards has punished the entire table to the point of oblivion then they at least have to stop playing creatures or lose that power because what happens with aura shards so i've included this because i wanted to talk about this because sure. again we never get to talk about this card no nope. so it's, it's like an eight dollar card um it's 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 great in these colors it's one green and white obviously uh aura shards has is one of those cards that's so oppressive that its ability just prevents people from even playing the artifacts or enchantments yeah. The one good thing you can say about the May ability is that occasionally, and I will do this if I get, if I, I have one aura shards. I think it's, I can't remember which deck it's in, but I have one. I, I got it a, a while ago before it was expensive. And th- the thing I'll do with it is I'll go, listen, I will only, I say this. Now, obviously, people can believe it or not, but like, I go, like, I'll only destroy things if they're like really. Like, you know, guys, don't worry. I'm only going to destroy things that are very powerful. I'm only going to kill things. So, like, if you got mana rocks, I'm not going to blow up your mana rocks. Like, you know, come on. I'm not going to do that. And then, of course, later on, you do that. But not yeah. at that moment. You don't need to do that. But Aura Shards is an impressive card that pre- just prevents people from playing things. So I don't love it for that reason. 
uh, I'd rather just run something like uh, Sylvan Reclamation, which is a similar card, but it's just a one-time use. Obviously, Ore Charge is better, but it just... I don't know. I don't like the way it affects the board sometimes. It's sometimes, great. Yeah. It's great as like a one-time use. It's like, oh my god, I got to kill all these things. Drop Ore Shards, make a few tokens, bam, 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 and then kind of like... I don't know. I wish then it could just turn off or something. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Weird. Anyways, but it's a great card, no doubt. And if you're in a, if you're in a spiky meta, you got to run it. It's great. Got it. Well, there you have it. That's it. A little bit of a Naya breakdown, right? Uh, hit us up on Twitter if you have a request for the next back to basics shard or wedge we deal with. Um, hopefully something without green in it, just because we've done two in a row with green. So maybe something like that. Uh, it'll be a little while before we get to it. We don't do these too often, but if, over time we will eventually do all 10 of the shards and wedges, all the three color teams, uh, and then trying to hit basic it, real learning experience here. How like some shards and our wedges don't lend themselves to the most basic of strategies. Yeah. It's interesting without just going straight vanilla value creatures. Yeah, exactly. We want to, we still want to have this be a commander deck that makes sense and, uses yeah. some yeah uses cards that you want but anyways yeah cool well, all right well uh we'll have a commander interview coming up so stick around for that uh otherwise we will see everybody next week with a uh, with episode 105 bye bye hi welcome back to the commander interview where we interview someone from the decks Unfortunately, again, Andy couldn't be with us here today. He saw a puffy cloud and he wants to go watch it disappear over the horizon. But I have with us not a character from a specific card, but we have our man on the shard, Dan from Naya. Naya Dan, great to have you on the show. Our Naya correspondent. How has it been reporting and living on the Naya shard? Uh, It's pretty, uh, it's it's not, you know, it's fine. It's okay. It's okay. Well, it's okay, dangerous, uh, but you know I like that sort of thing. I'm a, I'm a journalist, so I like being out here in the field. Uh, well, you yeah. know what? When you when you r- reached out to us at Commander's Brew and wanted to be our rep for the Shard of Naya, you seem to be very excited about it. Uh, so tell us, what are some of the best things you've discovered about Naya? What's it like living on Naya? Uh, like I said, uh, very sort of big uh, everything's either really huge or really small um i'm finding it very difficult to uh uh find any sort of uh clothes that fit uh, everything's either super tiny uh made only for say goblins or saprolings to wear uh or everything is for a giant massive monster beast man uh, you know, five power or greater. You know, I'm I'm a, I'm a two power man. I'm a three power man at, at most. Okay, um, and I'm, I'm I just uh, you know, none of the shoes fit here. You know what I mean? Oh boy, uh, it's tough. It's tough out here right now. Um, so have you not changed outfits since you got there? No, yeah, I've been wearing the same thing uh, the whole time I've been here because, you know, I I mean I I looked into maybe using one of the. Uh, giant beasts like the sleeve of one of their shirts but it uh, that's just a big tube you know what i mean like a great I, tube dress you'd look great in a tube dress. I, yeah i mean i think so but again that's it's even bigger than you're thinking man like it's <laughs> real big like it's a it's like three of me can fit inside the tube and well, i about, you like, know i'm no i'm no seamstress sewing? you know what i mean i'm no seamstress is what i'm saying to you i don't know how to do that stuff i can't just oh. make you know otherwise i'd use one of the strange leaves here uh Oh, what about or, animal you know. skin? You think I can kill any of these animals here? <laughs> no, I guess not. <laughs> I, I, you know, I got a Johnny and his buddies over here. You know, they're trying to do it and they're barely making it work. You know, I, I'm just I got a microphone. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It's tough. It's tough out here right now in, in Naya. You know, uh, every, everything. Everything's big. It's just either a, mil- a thousand creatures crawling all over, over you trying to kill you or one giant one trying to step on you. I, you know, I, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I picked the wrong shard to you know, report from. Well, everyone else from the other shards is very happy to report there and they're doing a great job. But if an opening opens up, we'll let you know. Uh, but for now, we don't have the energy to open the shard portal to let you to back to Earthplane. It's hard for me so, to even go into stores, man. You know what I mean? Either the doors are too small or they're the giant Jurassic Park things. And I can't push them open. Like that sounds uh, really hard. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, eh. 
there's cars here, but again, they're, we're talking dinkies or those giant ones that are on those TLC shows about building huge bridges. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where, like they have wheels bigger than buildings. I, I, I don't have a license for that. I got a regular G license, uh, you know? Yeah. yeah. Well, Anyways. at least you're in a plane that does have the color G. Does have the color G. Uh, yes, it does. So I'm eating, I'm eating a lot of salad out here also. There you go, with ranch know. dressing and tomato. We all know Naya's the salad shard. <laughs> Great. Thank you, Dan, for that food report from the Naya shard. Hey, uh, I, I just got that salad. The red's the tomato, green's the lettuce, and white's the ranch dressing. Yeah. The salad shard. Let's get yeah. that to catch on. Am I right? Salad shard. All right. Explosive veggies. Dan signing off. <laughs> Bye, Dan. If you want to contact us, I'm at Sean Tabaris. And I'm at Andy Holbone. Send us an email at commandersbrew at gmail.com. You can find out when we go live on Twitch if you follow us at twitch.tv. And if you care to support us on Patreon, check us out at patreon.com. And you can find our deck list on tappedout.net. And if we forgot anything, commandersbrew.com. <laughs> <laughs>